Uh, so good morning. Uh, we are Fedor. And today we'll share how we use our APIs, technology, and banking license to offer innovative services that power the future of digital banking. We will present what we call our NoStack banking offering, which is a cloud service for non-banks wanting to offer banking services to their customers and for challenger banks seeking to quickly enter, innovate, and disrupt markets. We'll also share a case study of no stack banking and how we enable customers to launch a digital bank in less than six months. And we'll demonstrate the APIs that power Fedor and how simple it is to get started with them. So to understand why we believe no stack banking is uh, compelling to fintechs and new banks, we want to begin with describing what's called the full stack approach and full stack startup, which you may be familiar with. Uh, Chris Dixon wrote about the full stack startup, and he described it as the new approach is to build a complete end to end product or service that bypasses existing companies. He wanted to say the challenge with the full stack approach is you need to get good at many different things. But the good news is that if you can pull this off, it's very hard for competitors to replicate so many interlocking pieces. Uh, companies like Netflix, Uber, and Apple are often cited as examples of the full stack approach where they became successful because they reinvented the full stack of their business. So imagine you want to build a new bank and you're compelled by the full stack approach and you decide to build and own the entire technology stack on your own. So what would it look like? It might look something like this, um, the architecture and technology at least. Uh, as you can see, there's many services and components here. Um, a full stack bank, if you built one today, would be cloud native would probably run in a platform as a service like Cloud Foundry, and it would be built around microservices, uh, RESTful APIs. You'd have a presentation layer um, with an omni-channel CMS solution. This would all integrate to the different APIs. And of course, you'd want to integrate the microservices and APIs to third parties and apps. So you would need API gateway uh, and application management features. But this is just a quick overview and a sample of some of the technology components and services you would need. Um, there's a lot more, for example, in partner services. And if you're really taking a full stack approach, many of these you'd want to move into your own stack. But the technology is just part of the story. Uh, you also need a banking license. And that can take years to acquire and has implications on management, experience, capital, and your business model. And of course, you must comply with AML legislation, capital requirements, <clears throat> reporting standards, and oversight from national and regional regulation. So to be a disruptive bank, following the full stack approach is an incredible effort. If you really invest in the technology to build the full stack and all aspects of the customer journeys, rebuilding both the front end and back end processes, can it be done in a reasonable time to bring it to market? At Fedor, we see banks, startups, and fintechs coming to us, wanting to build their solutions on our APIs and then they integrate other third parties into their customer journeys. So they follow the no stack startup approach, which is outlined by Andy Weissman. And he said, we are seeing something different emerging, the unbundling of the full stack startup, where instead of being good at many things, companies can just focus on the last mile of value they provide, the one thing they can excel at better than anyone else. So if you were to build a new bank using the no stack startup approach, what might your principles be? First, you'd want to focus on a minimum viable product so you can launch quickly with minimal resources and capital. <clears throat> Secondly, you'd be selecting best-in-class services that offer RESTful APIs and integrating them into your own presentation layers. Those services would have a very low barrier to entry, easy onboarding for developers, and offer free tiers or pay-as-you-grow models. After go-live, the no-stack startup would then specific, select specific parts of that technology stack or business processes and rebuild them, targeting those areas that they find bring the most, say, customer benefits or economic value. And over time, they transition towards a full stack solution. So now we come to no stack banking and the highlights of our offering. And we think this fits very well to uh, new banks, fintechs, uh, and non-banks wanting to provide banking services like mobile network operators. So what is no-stack banking? In its simplistic form, you can think of it as banking as a service, where Fedor provides 
the full features of its technology stack over APIs. And this is available as a cloud service, but it's more than that. We target no stack startups that not only need the technology, but they also need a license shelter, and they need the full stack of banking services offered by Fedor. And this is how we enable the no stack startup. A no stack startup would bring their own presentation or front end layers um, using our APIs. We provide all the technology. Um, we can even provide templates for the presentation layers. Uh, we manage the customers from the regulatory side, doing all the monitoring and reporting that's necessary for a bank. The no stack startup thinks of the account or the debit card as features of their solution, not as standalone products. And no stack startups on Fedor may take advantage of the services we offer, such as our UX team, customer support, card services, and communications. And no stack startups pay as they grow. So now I'd like to present an overview of one customer example. We're presently working with a large uh, mobile network operator um, based on a no stack startup solution. Um, in this case, we're following many of the principles that I previously outlined. And there we're offering here, it's um, a mobile only app that provides full banking services for the customer, a debit MasterCard, and integrated PFM. So from kickoff to publishing the app store, it takes us less than six months. And we're also in pursuit of drastically reducing this time. At the core of this offering are the Fedor APIs. And I'd like to walk you through just a couple quick customer journeys of this mobile app to show you the touch points to those APIs. So this is the customer onboarding journey. Um, this is where when the customer first downloads the app, uh, they would go to register. <clears throat> uh, the first case where we have an interaction with the APIs is with the device registration. So we are implementing uh, what's called the FIDO Alliance standard. Once the customer begins the registration process, uh, they start entering their customer data. We'll actually check the existence uh, of the customer. This calls some of our APIs, see if the customer is already registered or not. Um, after the customer has entered their basic data, we call our customer APIs and create that customer. That's followed by calling our account APIs, where we actually create a full bank account for that customer, but we lock out uh, the payout features of that account until the KYC verification is completed. Uh, we also call our cards APIs to create a card order with the customer's wish pin. Uh, following that, the customer in-app will start a video identification process. In the back end, once the KYC verification is complete, um, we will enable the payout features and unlock that account and trigger a card order. That card's then sent uh, to the customer by post. And uh, at the same time, we also call our loyalty APIs uh, to reward the customer because they complete the KYC verification. Finally, once the customer receives the card by the post, they will go back into the app and enter the CVC code uh, to fully enable that card. At the end of this process, you know, the customer has, is fully KYC'd uh, and has an account with a debit MasterCard. Uh, one more, uh, which I'll talk about, is the P2P transfer journey. Um, of course, the app we have uh, supports uh, all the standard SEPA transfers. Uh, but we also support what's called a P2P transfer. So from the application, the customer can select uh, from their address book or, or they can enter a mobile number or email address of a recipient for payment. Uh, we then call our transfer APIs to execute this, and we challenge the customer with a generic authorization API and where they have to enter their pay pin. Once the transfer is authorized, uh, the recipient of that transfer would receive an SMS or email notification with a link to uh, a landing page. They go to that landing page and they have two options. They can either <clears throat> uh, sign up and download the app and immediately receive the funds in their account, or they can enter their bank account details for an external account, and that will be transferred using our standard transfer APIs. So just to summarize this say, case study, um, we have two customer journeys for this app that demonstrate, say, no stack banking, where the customer's app, the presentation layer, is powered completely by the APIs we have in Fedor. And with Fedor, we have enabled this for the mobile network operator within six months using our standard APIs. And after the launch, we'll quickly enhance the solution with additional features. At this point, I'll hand over to Patrick, who will demonstrate some of our APIs. 
Yay, API demo. So let me shortly switch over to the screen, otherwise I won't see anything. So uh, who of you as a developer has hands-on experience for, uh, with RESTful APIs? Well, oh, OK, that's most of you. And who has experience with developing against banking uh, ba RESTful APIs uh, made by a bank? Well, that's quite a, quite a few. So um, for some of you, this, uh, this will be um, pretty much standard. For others, this will be new. But um, I think as a, as a European bank, we um, um, have something uh, unique there that we really offer a lot of uh, things on our API approach. And uh, I will show this demo um, on our German side, on our German bank, Feeder Bank. We also have one in, in the UK, and we're also building up things in other countries, but we'll start in Germany so um, to, to show you that. And just as a disclaimer, you can uh, use that yourself. You can sign up. But uh, if you want to go into production, you have to open a bank account with us in uh, Europe, which uh, may need some, some legal work. So, but you can, can really start um, um, at, at once. And, um, Basically, you start creating a, an account. Uh, we'll skip that because that is just standard procedure. And then you can, can switch over here. So I'm, I'm starting here at developer.feeder.de. Um, um, using the step two with um, the, the sandbox, just have to um, accept the, uh, that I want to be an API developer. And when, once I've done that, and of course I'm, I'm already logged in here, um, I'm, um, I'm move, I move over to the application manager page, and uh, here I can already see the applications that I have um, developed for, for uh, the, um, the solution. And um, down here I also have starter kits. So we'll just start with a starter kit. We have one, uh, them in, in Node.js, we have them in Go and PHP, and I'll just go with Ruby because I'm most familiar with that. And uh, click on download here. And at the same time, the application will be um, created in, in the back end. So um, we can uh, then, while well, the download hopefully starts now, we will see the, the uh, credentials there for the application. Let's try that again. That works here. And um, so, yeah, here, here are the cr uh, credentials for, for the login. And um, what I can also see is um, what kind of packet I have for this demo. I um, uh, have the, the full service packet, which means reading and writing on a bank account. So you can use the APIs either to, to read from your own bank account, write to your own bank account, meaning also making transactions on your bank account, or you're also using customer bank accounts, um, making transfers for them. So depending on what you want, what you need, we have different packages. So this one is around less than $70, $17 per month. And um, below, you can also see the different um, uh, permissions that we have. So you can either get a permission just to read from, from an API, um, from, for example, account data, user data, just reading if the user is uh, full KYC'd, uh, making sure that this is a full identified bank customer, up to uh, reading financial data or, or making transfers. So we try to make that pretty much fine-grained there. So I'll just open the zip file that was downloaded. And uh, go in there. You can see there's one file called example. If I open that in uh, in a in a browser, I, uh, go over there, open that in a browser, and um, in a um, text editor, I can um, see what what is inside. And here you can see some some uh, URLs, some credentials. So it's basically filled in. And what is also in there is a basic OAuth flow. So it's um, just um, standard OAuth 2 identification that is done here. And at the end of the process, um, the API is used, and uh, the um, the email address of the customer is, is shown. So I can uh, install that for Ruby. I need to bundle that to make sure that all all of the gems are in there, and then I can can start it. And uh, here I can see that on port 4567, the server is now running on my local host. I can open that here. And um, what you can see up here is that I'm um, directly redirected to the uh, um, sandbox server. So this is a sandbox environment that we have. And I can enter the um, details, the credentials that were shown on the last page. And if I um, 
access that, and that would also be the normal flow for the customer, then I would see um, three parts of an authorization. The first one is accepting the um, terms and conditions. The next one is um, agreeing that this application will read financial data, and I can also see the level of uh, detail that is, uh, is read from my account. Um, so as a customer, I can really see it in a very, very plain way, can allow that, and um, then we also have as a third part another agreement to um, that this uh, application can write and make transfers for me. So I agreed to all of that, and uh, after that I'm redirected back to my local host, and here you can see um, a bearer token that was uh, generated and um, an example URL. So this is basically uh, a way to, to get information, and here you can also see the email address. So for the next step, I can head over to a, to a REST client. Um, I'll just use Postman here, uh, make that a little bit bigger, uh, and I can copy in the, the bearer token and uh, add the, the URL that was shown. I'll go to the accounts URL first, add this authorization header um, with the bearer token in here, and uh, make my first request. So um, here I can see my account uh, with ID, account number, and also the customers that are um, um, related to, to this account with customer details. So in this case, I have a lot of access. If I would have less, I would see less, of course. And um, so the first step, um, can see the, the account data. Second step, um, then I can, for example, uh, look at transaction data, seeing the bank transactions on this account. So for each transaction, I have the type, I have uh, details, subjects, amount, and so on. Um, now I want to do a financial transaction, and I'm looking at um, SEPA transactions. So if you want to do um, transfers in the European Union, you would use that. If you want to open a, your, your branch in, the, in Europe, you would uh, probably do SEPA transactions. And um, to get a reference how that looks, I can go into our docs. So docs.de is the, the place to look at the different uh, examples. And here I can see one example of a SEPA transaction using an IBAN and a BIC uh, for, the, for the bank transaction data, and um, I can just copy it over, and I already did that, uh, copied it over. I, what I now have to do is I have to add the ID of the bank account that I'm doing the transfer from, so I'll copy in the um, ID of the bank account, and of course I also need the uh, bearer token again, so this is um, different for each um, application also in our sandbox, so here in the header I have to do that. And um, now I can see in the, in the body of the transfer, I have all this data. I can do send. And uh, now I can see it was successful. The transfer is in there. And if I head back and look at the transactions, I should be able to see this new transaction in there uh, with a payment to Walter White. And yeah, I can, I can see it. So this is a, um, the, the very basic of uh, how you can set up your, your transfer, and I think it shows that it's um, quite fast to do that. And uh, yeah, so for anything else, basically, we are always looking for people to, to partner with. So um, if you're a, a fintech startup, uh, we can uh, help you in setting up your, your business uh, for Europe. You can also include your offerings into our platform in our different countries. Uh, if you're a telco, we can also uh, help you to, to set up uh, this uh, like no stack banking in the sense of building your own bank offering, be the better bank, uh, interact with your customers in a better way. And uh, for social gaming and commerce platforms, we can offer innovative types of payments um, and, and uh, financial services. And also for retailers, we have different uh, integrations in financial services using our APIs. And uh, for banks, we can offer uh, the white labeling of our, our product um, the same way we did it uh, for, for us and uh, can also uh, enable digital banking and a new form of um, social media banking. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll be upstairs at our booth. Uh, I hope you, you um, come by and, and have a talk with us. And then we can show you a bit more if you're interested. And uh, thank you very much for, for listening.